Hi everyone and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. In my last video I showed you how to connect seven toggle switches to an Arduino Leonardo microcontroller and how to write the relevant IDE sketch code so that the seven physical toggle switches in the real world actually operated the seven corresponding switches in the virtual world. Now as you know the method of controlling X-Plane 11 in this way is for the Arduino microcontroller to issue various keyboard commands to your desktop based on how things like physical toggle switches are set. The problem with this though is that the Arduino Leonardo is only one of a few small microcontrollers that can work in this way due to their native ability to send keyboard commands back to the PC that's attached to it. The other microcontrollers that you could use are the Micro, the Dua or the MKR0. Now these are all well and good if your intention is to build a relatively small home cockpit setup with a limited number of switches connected. However if it's your intention to build a much larger scale home cockpit setup then you're going to run out of microcontroller pins pretty quickly to which switches and the like can be connected. With this in mind there are two ways that you can increase the number of micro uh, controller pins available to you. The first of these is to use a master controller and slave controller linked together such as an Arduino Leonardo as the master and a Mega 2560 or even an Uno as the slave and in this particular regard I'm currently in the process of preparing a video showing you how all this can be achieved something that I hope to release on YouTube in the next month or so. The second method is just to use one controller which must be a Leonardo for reasons already explained which is then attached to one or more 8 or 16 channel analog multiplexers and this is what we're going to be looking at today. Specifically I'll be showing you what a multiplexer is, how to wire it up to a microcontroller as well as the seven toggle switches that we used last time and then finally how to write the associated IDE sketch code to make it all work. Okay so what is a multiplexer? Well in layman's terms such a device is a small printed circuit board with an onboard processor that acts as a glorified switch. Not any old switch mind you, it's one that could have multiple inputs from up to say 16 toggle switches coming in on one side and only one signal uh, output leaving the other side. This signal output then goes back to one of the limited number of pins on the microcontroller itself thus giving a theoretical input signal reduction ratio of about 16 to 1. When the device is set up like this it's generally referred to as a multiplexer or you may have even heard the term MUX. However the cleverness of this little device doesn't end there because depending on how you write the associated IDE sketch code you can also set it up in completely the opposite way. Now what I mean by this is that now you can have one signal input coming from the microcontroller to one side of the device and then have 16 different outputs leaving the device on the other side to say a number of LCD displays. In this case you have a theoretical output ratio from the microcontroller of 1 to 16 and when it's set up like this the device is now referred to as a demultiplexer or demux. Now in terms of multiplexer or demultiplexer input output ratios of 16 to 1 or 1 to 16 and in the general sense of trying to minimize the number of microcontroller pins being used I was cautious to use the term theoretical. Why? Well, whether you use the device as a multiplexer or a demultiplexer, you still have to use at least four of the microcontroller pins for serial communication, which means that these particular pins can no longer be used as input or output pins for anything else. Having said that though, my understanding is that these same microcontroller pins used for serial communication can actually be shared with any additional multiplexer or demultiplexers used in your circuit. Bottom line though, using such devices basically saves pin availability on the microcontroller which in terms of the small capacity Leonardo 
has to be an advantage no matter which way you look at it okay so here we are in one of my favorite uh, desktop applications namely fritzing which is an excellent software tool for designing uh, wiring circuits um, on the screen you can see the main uh, components that we're going to be using uh, firstly we have the Arduino Leonardo microcontroller uh, which is connected to a desktop via the micro USB cable which gives this uh, Leonardo 5 volt supply and the cable also um, allows for two-way serial communication between it and the desktop PC then we have over here our lovely multiplexer 16 channel multiplexer in this case here and you'll note that the numbers of the uh, terminals start with 0 C0 and end in C15 it's not 1 to 16 it's actually C to 15 so that can be a bit confusing sometimes when you're connecting up and uh, then we have our seven toggle switches that we used in our previous video so the first thing we need to do is to power up the multiplexer and we can do that by taking a 5, five volt supply from the Leonardo and connecting it to this side of the multiplexer to pin uh, VCC, Victor Charlie Charlie and then of course a simple ground uh, cable here to the ground terminal then we need to pick up the ground side of each of the seven toggle switches like we did before if you remember and that goes to the spare ground cable on the microcontroller simple enough so far but now comes a little bit more complicated stuff um, we have to use um, as I said earlier whether you're using this as a multiplexer or a demultiplexer uh, it's a multiplexer in this case uh, you need four cable or four wires going from these four pin terminals here Sierra 0 to Sierra 3 going back to um, four available pins on your microcontroller it doesn't matter where you put these pins they could be in 4, 5, 6 and 7 uh, 10, 11, 12, 13 I've chosen 8, 9, 10 and 11 um, you can put them wherever you like within reason you can't use these two terminals here or those two there or that one maybe or that one so from pins uh, 2 to 13 you can put them in there somewhere so it, the important thing to remember here is that these serial cables have to be wired up to the correct terminals of the multiplexer um, so for eight uh, pin 8 here that goes to terminal Sierra 0 pin 9 goes to Sierra 1 pin 10 goes to Sierra 2 and lastly pin 11 goes to Sierra 3 whatever you do make sure that these are wired up the right way around otherwise it won't work at all then we have our signal cable and I've taken from pin 3 here um, and that goes to the SIG or signal terminal on the multiplexer quite straightforward now <coughs> when you've connected all your switches up uh, to this side the, the input from those switches goes through to that one cable there and it's red from that pin that's all so there we have our well seven tools which is in this case all connected up um, and I've used pin terminals uh, Charlie 0 through to uh, Charlie 6 um, now it's important when you start writing your IDE code that you remember which switch is connected to which channel on the multiplexer and you also need to remember which uh, where you have put your signal cable here say to pin 3 on the microcontroller so that is important that number there is important when you write your sketch code and these numbers here are important because you need to know uh, for Charlie 0 for example it's going to in this case the beacon lights Charlie 4 is going to the strobe lights you need to remember that otherwise you could um, end up with a bit of a mess so I've put the uh, information up here so that you can see it more readily and that my dear friends is it as far as the wiring is concerned 
Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is to show you what that looks like on my little test board. Okay, so this is my little test board here that I made for the last video. And uh, the various components are here. We have the um, Leonardo uh, microcontroller. We have a Mega uh, 2560 microcontroller, which is not being used in this particular video either. Uh, we have a power on uh, indicator LED here. We have a distribution uh, board of um, 5 volt pins in red here and then the ground pins in black in the middle is the new item here the multiplexer just here and then on that side of course you've got your seven toggle switches so in terms of the wiring um, as explained just now in the fritzing application we have a five volt supply coming from the board and to the board here from the desktop so this, this 5 volt supply goes goes from here uh, to my um, LED indicator and then goes to this distribution board here and from there this red one red cable here goes to pin VCC on the multiplexer similarly on the ground side you've got a ground pickup from the board here to to this distribution board and over to a GND pin on the multiplexer. From the other side of the microcontroller here we've got these four uh, serial communication cables the yellow, orange, red and brown and all of those are on uh, pin 8 through pin 11 and they go over to the multiplexer uh, pin terminal Sierra 0 to Sierra 3 and as I said earlier it's imperative that you get these the right way around so on here you've got pin 8 on the board on the microcontroller going to um, Sierra 0 on the multiplexer pin 9 going to Sierra 1 pin 10 going to Sierra 2 and pin 11 going to Sierra 3 then this blue one here is from the pin terminal on the on the microcontroller pin 3 and it goes to the SIG uh, terminal on the multiplexer. On the other side of the multiplexer you have uh, seven uh, wires from channel C zero, uh, Charlie 0 through to Charlie 6 and each of those go to uh, one of the respective toggle switches over the other side and on the other side of the switches you've got a ground uh, being picked up they come all the way back here to this distribution board and then from there back to the microcontroller board and uh, similarly as I said on this it's important to get the serial cables the right way around it's obviously important to remember which way around you've got these toggle switches connected i.e. This pin, this one here, goes to uh, Charlie 5, it looks like. So you have to remember that when you're writing your IDE code. And speaking of IDE code, why don't we now go and have a look at that? OK, so here we are in the uh, Arduino IDE um, sketch code application. And this is the start of the code. Um, all of this bit up here you can ignore because we covered that in the last video um, down here is the libraries included we need the keyboard.h library again as we used before because we are sending keyboard commands to the desktop and ultimately xplane 11 and we also need this library here mux.h which is your library for using uh, multiplexers and in this case I'm using a 4067 uh, 16 channel multiplexer um, if you want to try this uh, and you want to get hold of this mux.h library then you can get it at github uh, which is uh, the address for which is here um, this uh, I'm not entirely sure what this is in the code um, I've looked it up and apparently it's a naming convention for uh, codes or libraries <coughs> um, and it just uh, avoids conflicts with uh, all the different libraries and the names being used. Um, uh, 
I wouldn't get too hung up on that. So the next bit down here uh, is an important part, this slot here. Uh, this bit up here is, is purely text, it's not included in the code. But this bit here, where it starts mux1, that is included in the code. And basically what this means is you're setting up a, an, an instance of a, a multiplexer, or you're setting up one multiplexer. So you start with the phrase mux, which has got a nice orange color to say to show that that is actually um, correct. And then you give it a name, mux1, um, open parentheses or brackets, and then you've got pin. And if you remember, we have a signal cable going from pin 3 of the microcontroller um, to pin SIG, SIG, on the multiplexer. So that's where we're picking up all our information. And we're setting up that pin as an input because we're reading from it. We're getting data into it and, and reading from it. And we're using the internal pull-up resistor. The pin type is digital. Um, because we're getting one or zero uh, or high voltage or low voltage at that pin and the pin sets 8, 9, 10, 11 if you remember where all the serial communication cables uh, go from the microcontroller uh, to pins uh, Sierra 0 to Sierra 3 on the multiplexer. So those are the bits that enable the multiplexer to talk to the Leonardo. This one down here is uh, is blocked out from the code, but it's um, going to be a little test for me later where I'm going to be actually trying to use two multiplexers. Um, the Leonardo will only read from one at a time, um, but I'm going to try this one and see if it will actually read from two, not at the same time, at different times, but it, there will be a second multiplexer phys physically uh, put into the circuit. And you'll notice that all of this is the same here as the one above, except for uh, pin 4, which is where I'll connect the signal cable from the multiplexer to the Leonardo. As I referred to earlier, the pin set 8, 9, 10, 11 are the serial cables. And I, I understand that uh, however many multiplexers you have, you can use these same pins as, as these will be shared between the multiplexers. Okay, so moving down the code a little bit, we have all of this here. And you, if you saw my last video, you you might remember this. Um, this is uh, two lines of code for each of the seven switches. Basically, very similar looking. And what we're setting up here is uh, an integer in memory storage. <coughs> an integer, if you remember, is a single number with no decimal places. And we start it off with a value of zero. And the switch beacon state, i.e. the beacon switch state, uh, as, as the um, code loops around and around and around, um, it checks the beacon state each time it does so. And it's looking to see if it was different from the last time it did it. And if it is, then it assumes that the toggle switch has been moved. And that then will uh, uh, make something happen further down in the code. So all of this is number storage for each of the toggle switches, current beacon light state in this case, and previous beacon light state. And the same for all the other uh, switches down here. Going down to void setup. <coughs> um, initially we um, uh, open a communication with a serial monitor because in the code later on, I'm actually going to um, uh, put the results of this uh, program up on the serial monitor screen so you can see what it's doing when I throw the respective switches on my little test board. So that's all that is there. When I first came across or when I first started researching um, code for multiplexers I came across this line uh, here which apparently was required for the Leonardo microcontroller only. Well I'm, I'm using that microcontroller and I've blanked that line out and it still works so I'm not entirely sure what it is but I've left it there just in case I need to refer to it later. Then we uh, come to the more interesting part and this is the bit that's more sp uh, specifically written for the multiplexer itself. 
um, and we are going to ask the program essentially to um, go through each of the multiplexer input channels one by one and read each one and then do certain things with that information so um, to start the loop uh, we have this little bit of uh, code here and I'll try and explain it uh, I've written some text here to, uh, in an attempt to do that to try and explain it a bit a bit more for you but basically uh, keeping it simple uh, we are asking the program to look at uh, channel 0 or C0 on the multiplexer I means channel doesn't matter which number channel it just stands for a channel but in this case we're saying if channel if the channel is zero that's where we want you to start looking i.e. the first uh, terminal on the multiplexer um, so start at zero but don't go any further um, uh, finish at zero that's this this bit here i is less than one prevents um, the program from looking any further than channel zero because that's the one we're really interested in um, and there are more examples of this a bit further on if that if I had put uh, I is uh, less than nine then it would have cycled through each of the channels courtesy of I plus plus until it got to nine and then it would start again but we're not doing that in this case because we're, uh, we're not interested in nine channels or the data from nine channels I'm just interested in one channel and it's Charlie zero and that is where our beacon light switch is connected to the multiplexer so what we're saying here is okay start at channel one read the information there uh, sorry channel zero read the information don't go any further because that's the only one we're interested in and read the pin uh, which is uh, signal pin uh, 3 on the on the microcontroller um, let me rephrase that it starts by uh, asking us to look at channel 0 on the multiplexer which comes through on signal pin 3 on the microcontroller but once it's read the data um, it's looking for a high or low voltage and when it's uh, as it loops through as the code loops through in the void loop section it will come across this pin this channel each time or read this channel each time and it will say right well is this uh, is the data on that pin different from what it was last time and if it was then it assumes that the physical toggle switch for the beacons beacon lights has been moved it's been switched on or off so yes it is different from last time in uh, let's assume that and it will say okay okay if it is different and the voltage is low then what, what I want you to do is issue a uh, lowercase c keyboard command to the desktop and explain and that will move the uh, beacon light toggle switch accordingly in the virtual world I also um, want you to serial print uh, this these uh, this text here I want you to say beacon lights um, are switched on if it's a low voltage and I want you to serial print the value uh, or the channel I um, on the screen as well and I'll show you that in a minute however if the uh, voltage state at the switch or at channel zero uh, is it high then I want you to uh, issue keyboard command lowercase c again because that's how uh, x plane 11 works you use the same keyboard command in many cases to switch to turn a switch on and turn it off uh, only in this case uh, I also want you to print beacon lights are switched off so when you are using this code for real in a home cockpit setup you won't need to have this serial print line here or this serial print line here it's just a visual representation on a serial monitor to show you whether your code is working or not so eventually when we hone this program um, I will be removing those uh, serial print commands 
Okay, so we've determined that the switch is different from when I looked when the program looked at it last time, and we've done one or either of these two things based on whether it was a high voltage or a low voltage at channel zero on the multiplexer. Then the program normalizes or neutralizes, I should say, um, what it's uh, seen before, and it's now going to declare for itself by courtesy of this. Uh, like a change state command I now want you to assume that the last time we looked at the the switch state is now the same as it is this time you're looking at it uh, to stop continually looping through this program if you don't have this bit in here um, then the program will continually continually issue keyboard commands of lowercase c and you'll get rows and rows and rows of them on your serial monitor and the switch in the virtual world of x -Plane will be flicking on and off all the time which we don't want so you have to put this in here and when uh, the, uh, serial, the switch states are considered to be the same this time and the last time we looked then release all keyboard commands so then moving further down it's the, pretty much the same thing again for all of the um, other toggle switches uh, only there are some subtle changes to what we're asking the program to check in terms of the multiplexer this time here for the landing lights um, switch we are saying well start at channel one this time on the multiplexer because that's where our landing light switch is connected uh, don't go any further than one uh, by issuing this uh, command here I less than two so we're only interested in uh, channel C1 don't bother incrementing any further because again that's where we're, what we're interested in so read it um, and if there is a low voltage at that channel on the multiplexer then issue keyboard command uh, D um, if the switch state this time you checked is different from the last time you checked i.e. the switch has been moved so issue keyboard command D in this case and print uh, landing lights are switched on and then if the voltage is high um, issue keyboard command D again and print on the serial monitor landing lights are switched off neutralize the code with this bit here and release all keyboard commands and it's the same all the way down through all of the toggle switches the only thing that more, more uh, changes is the description of the switches um, and this uh, c this commands here for checking the multiplexer each time we're only interested in one channel so we're confining the check or the search through the multiplexer to one channel only and we do the same thing all the way down to the last switch which is for pito heat and this is we're interested in channel zero uh, charlie six on the multiplexer so that's where you start looking no point in looking at channel zero one two three four five because there's nothing of interest in that on those channels as far as this part of the code is concerned we only want to look at channel charlie six for the pito heat switch because that's where it's connected and uh, issue these commands down here as we did before okay so that is more or less it for cut for the code um, admittedly oh, I just it looks complicated they always do these codes um, the only way you're going to learn is to uh, use them uh, play around with them uh, making sure that you set up your physical wiring uh, to match the uh, pin numbers that you've declared in the code and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch my um, microcontroller on there it goes and I'm going to open the uh, serial monitor up here and it's currently showing up on my other screen so I'm just going to bring it across here like this word of warning uh, when you test this code um, not only will you get text showing up here but don't forget the the code is doing what it's designed to do and that is to issue keyboard commands 
and it will do that irrespective of where your uh, focus is on your PC. You could be in a Word document and it will start issuing those keyboard commands in that document. If you're focused on this code, it will start issuing keyboard commands in here, wherever your cursor happens to be. So if we're if I'm down here, for example, um, and I run this code, then it could start putting letters in here and ruining your code. So don't uh, just be aware of that. And if you are going to run the code, make sure your cursor is in this box up here. So when the um, program starts issuing keyboard commands, it will do it here and not in your code, which which could conceivably uh, do a lot of damage and it will take you a while to find out what's what's actually happened. So now with that cursor firmly in that box I'm going to throw uh, a switch here and look at that, it works. Uh, I just switched on the fuel pump and it's on channel uh, Charlie 5 on the multiplexer and it's switched on. Now I'm going to turn it off again. There we are. Now the next one beacon lights on off landing lights on off taxi lights on off navigation lights on off strobe lights and lastly pito heat there we are and you can see up here it's there's the keyboard commands being issued there and this is the text uh, that we asked it to print on the serial monitor as well. So when we uh, get this code up and running in the real in the real home cockpit setup, we're not going to ask it to print this. It's just taking up memory on on your microcontroller. All we want it to do is issue these keyboard commands, which go through to your desktop, through to Xplane, and move switches in the virtual world. Okay, so having done that, we can uh, we've tested it. It's okay. We'll dismiss the serial monitor now. We don't need it anymore. Um, I don't think I've made any uh, changes to my code by mistake. I'll just run the compiler again to make sure it still works. Yes, it does. That's good. That's it. We don't need to do any more. So what I'm going to do next is to um, uh, open up a session of X-Plane again with our little Cessna 172 and I'll uh, inlay some video uh, of my test board like we did last time so that you can see the uh, physical switches operating the uh, the corresponding switches in the virtual world of X-Plane. Okay so let's go and do that. Okay so here we are in our little Cessna 172 and these are the switches that we're interested in. So we bring in our video overlay of my test board and we'll just go through these switches one by one. Starting with the fuel pump on off and then the beacon lights on off, landing lights, taxi lights, nav lights, strobe and lastly a pito heat so we can switch them off very quickly or switch them on very quickly I should say in quick succession and then switch them all off and there are no delays they all do what they're programmed to do okay so that really brings us to the end of this particular video um, it's taken an awful lot of time to try and work out how to implement uh, multiplexers into um, a circuit where it can be used uh, to control a flight simulator X-Plane 11 in this case but I'm, I'm really pleased that I pers uh, persevered with it um, it does work and if there's anything you can do to reduce the requirement for pin usage on the Arduino Leonardo then so much the better and the multiplexer does just that unfortunately the Leonardo is is a definite requirement in these circuits because it's the only one that or one of a few that can issue keyboard commands but unfortunately it's memory capacity and uh, the number of um, available pins to use are uh, not that uh, extensive so 
um, why not use multiplexers instead so there we are um, if you've got any questions as usual uh, please let me know um, give it a go see how you get on and uh, if you found this video of interest then please smash the like button and also don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you don't miss anything going forward okay so that's it from me this time tata for now